If you're struggling with GCC physics but also you want to get a 9 on it, you're at the right video because today I'll be sharing with you all top 10 tips on how to get a 9 in GCC physics guaranteed. So you want to watch this video till the end to find out the tips today. So these top 10 tips have been gathered based on three things or three areas. First one is based on my own personal mistakes that I have made when I was undertaking my own GCC physics exam. Number two is based on my own sister's teacher's advices and comments on how to get a 9 and of course based on research and watching so many YouTube videos out there to combine it all together to make this one whole video that you only have to watch to make sure that you get that 9 in GCC physics. So if you're interested to find out the tips from the basics to the most advanced then please keep watching this video till the end. Before I jump on to the advanced tips, I want to make sure that you're already doing these four basic tips. First one is making sure that you're looking at the mark scheme, the examiner's reports, as well as the teacher's comments really, really closely and carefully so that you know exactly what it takes to get a nine in terms of how to answer the questions. Also, what are the examiners looking for in terms of an answer on how to really good, write a good answer. And of course, you know, the mark scheme to make sure that you know exactly which points give you the marks instead of just waffling around when you're writing the answers in the exam. Number two is making sure that you're writing as many past papers as possible out there so that you know exactly um, what it takes and you're familiarizing yourself with the structure as well of how the questions are asked in the exam and number three is using as many free resources as possible online to make sure that you know exactly what you are um, so that you are spanning out or panning out as many different ways of learning the content as opposed to just reading of, of the textbook and just making notes. And number four is of course sending as much as work as possible, especially when you don't understand the topics. Um, this You can do this very easily through email, but also you can just meet up the teachers in school so that in that way you are familiarizing yourself with the questions and you know which topics are going to be coming up as well as you're not getting confused as to how difficult that subject might be or the topic might be and you're understanding it better in a way. So you want to make sure that you're following this already basic tips and now I'm going to be moving on to the advanced tips. Tip number one is making sure that you know the content inside out in terms of GCC physics, which I think is a no-brainer, I know, but I would recommend for you to really study physics, especially when you're studying maths as well, because these two subjects are quite interlinked together in a way. So you want to make sure that whenever you're revising physics, the, uh, the subject after that could be maths, or if you're starting off with maths, then you can follow up with physics. So in that way, you are linking these two subjects in a way that is really good and you're not going to be stressing out too much because they're quite similar in, in some ways and also very different so that can be a really good way to schedule out your revision sessions in a way so that you are not forgetting physics but also you're going to be practicing maths as well because maths is very important in physics so make sure that you are knowing the content inside out in terms of GCC physics so that you know what you're talking about in the exam. <laughs> Along with tip number one, tip number two is about knowing all the equations and formulas really, really well. And this is a pro tip from one of the teachers or my or my sister's physics teacher because he has actually said that if you know the equations and formulas, that can be a really good way and an easy way to boost your marks in the exam because sometimes students do forget these basic formulas and equations and that can make them lose very basic two, three, four, five markers and they're all usually very away from a really good grade. So if you're, let's say, for example, if 65 is a B or a B grade or an 8 grade, then boosting it up with those five marks of an equation or something like that, that can boost you up to an, a nine grade. So you want to make sure that you are knowing all the different types of equations and formulas. And you can learn this very well by doing active recall strategies, which I think is a pro technique in terms of how to really revise and study in general, because you can use as many different strategies as possible. For example, mind map, Feynman technique, brain dump, past paper, space repetition. So you want to implement as many different types of revision techniques as possible so that in that way the information sticks into your head but you're also not getting bored. Tip number three is very unique and that is to create a booklet with all the questions that you get wrong and you keep checking them over and over again to see that if you can remember the information and until you cannot get it wrong anymore. So you want to make sure that every time you're attempting a past paper you're making this small booklet where you actually write down all the questions that you got them wrong and what question it was mm -hmm. so that every time you're actually attempting a past paper again and you see that question coming up in the exam or in that particular past paper then you're actually remembering to write the answer in that way so that you can actually gain the marks in that way you're going to be boosting your marks but also you're going to be remembering the information much better as well so you want to make sure that this booklet is with you at all times whenever you're especially conducting um, a past paper which is time in a time condition so you want to make sure that this can be a really good way for you to really boost your marks in general and also it can be a really good way for you to also understand the information as I mentioned before 
Tip number four is making sure that you know the command words inside out in terms of how to structure the answers based on that command word. For example, you want to know what does explain mean, discuss mean, compare and contrast and describe. So you want to know these words and what they actually mean because they mean different things and they want you to answer the questions in a different way based on that word. So you want to make sure that you are researching on Google what are the command words and how to structure the answers based on those command words and what they tell you to write. So in that way, the examiners will know that you have practiced so many past papers first of all and second of all you know how to answer the question which means that they will be forced to give you marks literally so you want to familiarize yourself with as many command words as possible in the exam and you can do this very easily as I said by just researching on Google and downloading a paper or a PDF with all the command words next to them is a definition of those so that can be a really good way to structure your answers. Tip number five is making sure that you are only prioritizing all the topics that has been assigned by the teacher and has been confirmed they're going to be in the exam that you're going to be coming up in May or something like that so you want to make sure that you are knowing all those topics only and you're not revising the whole entire book if you don't have to and of course you're not also forgetting the lab experiments or any kind of experiments you have conducted in the school in school in general so that you know exactly what are the lab experiment what is called and what are the practical skills that you have learned and as well as what are the stages in that lab experiment as well so that whenever you get a question that might be based on those lab experiments that might be worth 10 or 12 markers or any other marks in general you know exactly what to write so in that way you have to have a good set of organized notes so that in that way you're not forgetting any of those stages because you never know one stage might be worth one mark so if you forget one stage that means that you're losing the marks so you want to make sure that you are prioritizing all those topics that has been assigned by the teacher and only and also do not forget the lab experiments Tip number six is making sure that you are not being stressed if you're not really understanding any topic and you're finding one topic specifically very difficult to understand and digest. That is okay because everyone learns at different capabilities and different capacities. Some people take longer to really understand one topic but for others it can be really easy. So you don't want to compare yourself with other students if they're learning that content much better or much quicker than you because everybody as I said is really different from each other and you want to make sure that you're not getting stressed because of because you can't understand something because eventually you will get it at the end and you will hopefully get that nine as well that you wish if you implement all the 10 tips that I've shared with you all today but of course take your time and start early I would say if you're really struggling with physics or maths related type of subjects because that can take really long um, because they did for me so I had to really start early on in my GCSEs to really understand those topics and really get the best I could do so you you cannot be stressing yourself over right now thinking that oh my god I can't really do this because that can just go that's just going to drain your energy first of all and second of all it's going to waste your time so you want to make sure that you're not getting stressed and start early as much as possible revising this brings me to the end of today's video. I hope you really enjoyed and found these 10 tips on how to get a 9 in GCC physics really helpful. And if you know someone who's going to be undertaking this GCC exam or physics this year or next year, then please share this video with them so that they can start prepping right now for the exam that's upcoming or next year as well. But other than that, if you're interested in kind of academia-based um, videos as well as productivity and self growth kind of videos, I make these kind of videos on a weekly basis based on the schedule that's been provided in my About section of my YouTube channel. But other than that, I will see you in my next week's video.